Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Only one, Jenny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> So Me a, too. A very, a very personal class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi. Well, I think everyone is is. Eh, o no saben que hay clase o pensaron que o quizá no pueden porque están eh, pro con problema, ¿verdad? Podría ser, aunque no nos nos anunciaron que sí va a empezar ahora. Sí, a nosotros también nos dijeron ayer que íbamos a descansar, pero por lo del gobierno, ¿verdad? Pero ahora ya tenemos que empezar, porque son cuatro días, si no, no salimos en la semana. ¿El viernes tendríamos clases? Sí, sí, tenemos que, porque tiene que ser lunes, um, martes. Hoy descansaríamos, no descansaríamos hasta el viernes, porque ya ayer ya lo hicimos. Uh -huh. yo, yo día jueves tengo problemas de conexión no por internet sino porque yo vengo de donde la iglesia eh, vengo tipo ocho ocho y media estoy por acá en mi casa aunque a veces me conecto cuando vengo en el transporte pero eh, por la participación más que todo yo puedo venirle escuchando y todo pero no participaría día jueves ah vaya ok está bien está bien Okay, I see someone is connecting, Catherine and Isaac. Isaac. Okay, Isaac, Dennis, Rocio, connecting, and let me see. Uh, Jason, yeah, he's part of the staff. And let me see. Okay, okay. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're making the effort for your classes. Uh, okay, let's begin. Um, I'm Claudia. You can call me Miss Claudia or just Claudia. It's okay for me or Clau, if you feel comfortable with that. I'm your new teacher. We will be here um, maybe a month, a complete month. Um, I'm a new teacher. <laughs> I'm just beginning. You're, you're my first course. And like a very long course, I was teaching like 15 days ago as a test, but I approved. So now I'm formally hired. So um, I'm beginning here as, a, as your teacher. So let's begin. You know, what is the, what is the, the method, the presentations, your name? Uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Uh, whatever you want, to, you want to tell us about yourself, it's okay for me. So let, let's begin. Mm, I, I already told you my name. Um, normally, let's say I'm a designer. I'm an interior designer. I love colors. I love everything related with art. Where do I learn English? Mm, where did I learn? I learned in the beginning in El Salvador, but then I began to travel a lot. And finally, I lived in the US, a kind of mm, four years. I was in Utah, but I know a few states of the United States. I know exactly also the accent in New Zealand, Australia, and British. So if you, if you, I can tell you the difference in between there. So if you, uh, you are intermediate, so it is supposed you are understanding me a lot <laughs> so I will try to not use Spanish it will be like 30 percent Spanish or 25 and then I will be only in English only in English and I would like you to uh, use English also if you don't remember or if you don't know just ask me okay and one of my personal things I love cats I have seven cats. They are my kids. <laughs> I love them. And normally in the background, sometimes you will see someone that is walking <laughs> and is my cat. Okay. Okay, let's begin. Who wants to begin? 
Me. Okay, Jenny. Hi, good evening, everyone. I am I Jenny Portillo. I am a teacher. Um, the preschool, the preschool. Um, my favorite color is blue and green. Mm -hmm. I my my hobby is draw. Mm -hmm. Is whatever thing I said no no is um uh, I don't have in uh I prefer this this design in the one draft no it's whatever draft um um I like it uh pastas you like Italian food okay I like it too. yeah there is a festival yeah. right now at Pizza Hut Italian festival <laughs> yeah um one more um I learn English in my school and and in in this moment in this and in this corporation this I learn the English more. Um, that's that's it. No no more. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. welcome to the course. Okay. Next, ladies Thank first. You. Let me see who's next. I see someone here, Catherine. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Catherine Ramirez. I am 26 years old. And my favorite color are red and black. Mm -hmm. um, my hobby are listening to music and watch a movie in my family. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, I um, live in Ciudad Arce, mm -hmm. Libertad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working in Export Salva for mm -hmm. um, That's all. <laughs> okay, in Export Salva, do you work in manufacturing, right? Yes. Which one? There are so many factories there. Um, shirt, shirt, um, um, uniforme para presos, how do you say? Gel uh, uniforms. Uniform. Mm, yes. Okay, but what, what is the name of the company? Um, Confecciones mm -hmm. del Valle. Mm, I know, I know the, 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 the. I know um, company. Um, and um, industrial um, board bar, bar mm -hmm. um, and USA. Okay. Uh, USA. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Oh, that is nice. I was working in, in, in manufacturing also. Uh, in 2010 to 2015, I was working in Textile Pico, and I know the Export Salva Zone very well. I was in an interview there for Garen, Garen in Mississippi. Ah. They paid for me a travel for Mississippi to see if I can be a pattern maker. Yeah, that is, that is, that is nice. Okay, so I'm detecting a kind of problems with plurals. Also for, for Jenny, for us, when I say my favorite color is singular, but if you say green and blue is your favorite colors. Uh, it's, the, it's important in English to uh, finish with the sound at the end. That is yeah, I, I, a lot of sense. Yeah, I understand it, but I, I have a problem, but it's a pronunciation at the end, the words for the letter S. I, I might difficult this, the letter S and then the words because uh, I don't hear the letter S, but my I, I difficult pronunciation this word, but then the letter S. The letter S, yeah, is yeah. because is because of Spanish because yeah. the positions of the tongue and the teeth are different for English than for Spanish, so we are not putting emphasis at the at the end. We are putting emphasis uh, before that. So, okay, but we will, yeah. we will give you some tips to improve. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, now let's continue girls. 
Rosa Maria and Maritza. Let me see. Is there any, any more people here? And Rosio. Okay, and the last one will be the only gentleman that is here. <laughs> it would be Isaac. Okay, then I'm listening to Rosa Maria. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Rosa Maria Martí. Mm -hmm. uh, I work in Fast Cargo. I am okay. assistant financing. Mm -hmm. and my uh, employment is um, uh, import, export, and logistic card. Logistics. For okay. Logistics. Uh, mm -hmm. Logistics. Oh, very interesting. I have, yes, I have a dog for 10 years old. Mm -hmm. It's a cocker Spanish. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. And I live in San Salvador. Mm -hmm. And my favorite colors mm -hmm. are violet and blue. Violet and blue. Okay, that is nice. I used to have a cocker too. I, I had him for 14 years. They are very, very long life uh, race. So yeah. they are very cute and very, very uh, familiar. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Is my dog is, the name is Brownie. Brownie, okay. <laughs> Mine uh, was Rocky. Rocky, wow. <laughs> yeah, Rocky. <laughs> this is a specialty, uh, temperamento temperamental. Uh, no, it's the behavior. Is it what? behavior? Repeat. B? Behavior. Behavior. Mm -hmm. Behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's very sweet mm -hmm. and calm. Mm -hmm. he, all the time uh, is my sombra. Shadow. Shadow. Mm -hmm. He's my shadow. Or no, I, yeah. I, I go to the bed, to the bath. Mm -hmm. This uh, is uh, in the in the door. Mm -hmm. I go to the garden. Mm -hmm. Go go uh, atras de mi. Back Behind back. you. Okay. Back Behind back. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like a guardian. It's like a guardian for you. Yeah. They they this race is like that. It's it's very recommended for for children because it's very like maternal and he's uh, taking care of the family all the time yes. and he's very domestic and it's yes. easy easy for, easy going for the uh, people all all the uh, all the people mm -hmm. uh, is is this similar relation for for this uh, rasa mm -hmm. the dogs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i know i know they are very very uh, smart also some of them are blind, very young, and they learn the house by memory. So they, 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 they have to be very smart. Okay, thank you, that is nice. Okay, let's continue. Thank you for you. <laughs> Let me see, Maritza. Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name, my name is Maritza Ortiz. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in Sonsonate City. Okay. And I work in Sonsonate City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, I am administrative assistant in the Human Resource. Mm -hmm. uh, I like very much the English, but mm -hmm. it's a little difficult for me uh, because I don't have time. Uh, no tengo mucho tiempo. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. Uh, but um, I want uh, learn very much. Okay, that is that is really nice. I see you. You're very very um, advanced in in the just a few things that we have to correct. But uh, when we say uh, English, it is not da. It's just English without da. In Spanish, we use ella. But in English, is when we are talking about something general, we are uh, omitting this word. And the, the other one is administrative. 
administrative assistant. That is the, the, the correct term. But more than that is, is, is very nice. It's very nice. Okay, let's continue, Rocio. Hello. Good Hello, good evening. Um. <laughs> Era lo que vamos a decir de cada uno, perdón. Presentation, anything you want okay. to share with us. Um, sorry for I'm late mm -hmm. because I am work, working um, right now. You're working and, right now? Okay. Yeah, and, but I work at home mm -hmm. and um, Voy a iniciar, espero el video de trabajo. Um, good evening, my name is Rocío Gil. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite color is green. Mm -hmm. And my hobby is um, listening to music. And I love my pets. And I love um, uh, have time for, for them. Mm -hmm. And my family too, but I love my pets. And, <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, I am I am work at what to say is at uh, to airling mm -hmm. airling, and I work with um, customers, and I am. Uh, you work in an service. airline, an airline? Yeah. yeah. Which one? Volaris. Volaris. Oh, that is nice. I used to work with Avianca. And I, oh. in the beginning, I worked with Taka and then with, with Avianca. I know exactly the beginning of Volaris. Exactly. <laughs> no, okay. That is nice. I, I heard today, uh, today it was a really really hard day for aviation in the in the in the world because the they are not accepting the the uh, safety uh, rules anymore so it is a fight between the companies and the and the health authorities so i think i support the the airlines absolutely because they are they are losing a lot of money a lot of money trying to survive and a lot of people is not working they are they said they have no employees to attend people because a lot of people is not yeah. respecting their rules okay that is nice i i wish i can return to airline world i wish i would be again in airline world <laughs> okay. i'm not why not? You don't like it because you don't have um, the free free tickets. <laughs> no, I don't have. But uh, um, it's um, how do you say myth? It's a myth. Yeah, mm. a myth because um, we don't have uh, free tickets. Only uh, just if you a uh, win um. Any, uh, any, um, what do you say? Juego of Dinamica. Dynamic. If you win any, any dynamic, mm -hmm. dynamic, you mm -hmm. can, uh, you can win a ticket, but, um, no, we don't have a ticket, free tickets for, um, all time or one, one ticket, we one, one free ticket for the year. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, maybe rules have changed because when yeah. I was at TACA, we were having one ticket for free. In my case, it was for me and my family. Uh, and uh, but it was uh, it is what it was like um, uh, subject to space, free space. If there was a free space, I can I can go on board. But if not. We were staying all the time at the airport. And I had a lot of nightmares around the world staying at, at airports, waiting for a space in the planes. That is the only bad thing. But other than that, it's amazing. Okay, okay. Let's see, the last one, Elena. 
Good evening, teacher. Hi. Well, uh, my name is Elena Gutierrez. I'm 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I like the ducks. I love the ducks. You love and dogs. I like, mm -hmm. Yes. And I like to listen to music. Mm -hmm. mm, I like the English, but I think I need more practice. Yeah. So, Okay, okay, no problem. We will make it a lot of we will make a lot of practice, no problem. <laughs> okay, that is nice. Mm -hmm. Do you study? Do you work? I work. I'm a graphic designer on a mm. print printer. I mean, I don't printing. know how to say in, in imprenta. Printing. Uh-huh. Printing in a printing. Yes. Mm, yeah, that is that is good. I used to do some work, sometimes graphic, but normally I'm digital. I'm UI designer. So um, oh, yes. sometimes I'm giving classes about it. Okay, so let's see. No one else is new. Okay, let's go with Isaac. Good night. Are you listening to me? Isaiah, can you listen to me? Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. My name is Isaac Munguia. Mm -hmm. I live in San Miguel City. Oh. I work in, in, in Caja de Credito de San Alejo. Okay. I am a financial chief. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a, a bit. But my mother has four dogs. Oh, and my I God. like dogs. Okay. <laughs> and I like, how do you say tortuga in English? Turtles. Oh, I like turtles. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, mm. I used to have when I was a child turtles, very, very small and very, a lot, a lot big ones. They are beautiful. Oh. Yes. Oh, do you like seafood? Because San Miguel has a lot of nice seafood. Yes. Okay. It's good. I know San Miguel. <clears throat> San Miguel is, is, is nice. I, I wish I can go again one day. <laughs> it's nice. <Venga. laughs> I love Les it. Esperamos. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, now I see another one, Jose, Jose Jonathan. Hello, can you hear me? Jose. No? Okay, he's gone. Let me see, Elena, Rocio, Jenny, Catherine, Maritza, Rosalina. Uh, I see, uh, okay, everyone is ready. Let me share my screen. So we will begin with the contents right now, a little quick. Uh, let me see. Here we have the lesson. Okay, let me see. Let me know if you can see my my screen, please. Can you see them? It has to see. Um, it has to be showing less on objective. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's begin reading in English. In this lesson, participants will listen and practice a conversation between family members. Okay. Let's uh, turn on our, our seems like they're having a problem here. Oh, it's a YouTube. Okay. Thank you. 
Hi, welcome to this new course. This time you will not only listen to our conversation, but you will also notice two part verbs or phrasal verbs. Pay attention to turn down, pick up, and so on. Try to write them down as they will help you for later usage. Listen and practice. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better, thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, Mom, I'm on the phone. All right, but do it as soon as you hang up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Okay, let's listen to this one more time. Hi, welcome to this new course. This time, you will not only listen to our conversation, but you will also notice two part verbs or phrasal verbs. Pay attention to turn down, pick up, and so on. Try to write them down as they will help you for later usage. Listen and practice. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better. Thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, Mom. I'm on the phone. All right. But do it as soon as you hang up. Okay. No problem. Goodness. Were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Okay. So let me, let me ask you, do you know exactly what is phrasal verbs? Or do you have any idea what is this about? Or is the first time that you're seeing phrasal verbs? Listen and practice. Hello, are you listening to me? It, it is uh, the, the, the third down. Yeah, but the definition exactly of phrasal verbs, it is? It is uh, a phrase. Mm -hmm. A phrase that is that is composed of two of two uh, words that in one a, a specific pronunciation means only one verb. For example, let's identify them in the conversation. First one is the topic is the topic of the conversation is turn down the TV. In Spanish, we only have only one word, is apagar. But turn down is bajarle volumen, turn down. When I say turn down the TV is like eh, bajarle volumen, for example. If I say pump up the volume, do you know this song? It was very famous. Pump up is like increase the volume, increase the volume. Subile, ¿verdad? Subile. Aquí se ocupan las phrasal verbs, son dos palabras que unidas generalmente eh, son eh, un verbo, nada más. Entonces hay que aprenderse, ¿verdad? Porque a veces hay una, por ejemplo, el verbo get, sumado con varias eh, prepositions, son, significa muchas cosas. Por ejemplo, get off, get on, get up, get in. Uh, getting to son varias que el mismo get con diferentes partículas significan diferente entonces aquí vamos a ver la primera frase dice uh, Jason Jason turn down the TV please entonces ahí le dice turn down eh, bájale a la televisión por favor le dice oh but this is my favorite program y le dice, I know, but it's very loud. Y le dice, el papá se está quejando, pero el niño le dice, es mi programa favorito. Le dice el, 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 el niño, eh, OK, I've turned it down. Lo voy a bajar. Dense cuenta que el artículo va en medio de las dos palabras. I turn it down. O sea, no es I turn down it, es I turn it down. That is better, thanks. Listen, 
please pick up your things. Pick up. Pick up es recoger, levantar las cosas. Es, le está pidiendo la señora, la mamá, le está pidiendo a Lisa que por favor recoja sus cosas. Y le dice, they are all over the floor. Están tiradas por todo el piso. Listen. In a minute, mom, I'm on the phone. En un minuto, mamá, estoy en el teléfono. He said, Mrs. Field, all right, but do it as soon as you hang up. Hang up is colgar, colgar el teléfono. O sea, eh, hang up es como descolgar, ¿verdad? O sea, eh, cuando uno se quita el teléfono de la, de, la, de la oreja y lo cuelga. Okay, no problem. Mrs. Field, goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Es como, Dios, um, éramos nosotros así cuando éramos niños. Y le dice el señor Phil, definitely. Claro que sí, o sea, como quien dice, todos son así, ¿verdad? Somos así, mejor dicho. Ok, so, um, I want you to uh, make a partner with someone and pick if you want to be Mr. Phil or Jason. And uh, let me see, there are three. Mr. Phil, Jason, and Mrs. Phil. Okay, I need three volunteers. And please, uh, let's make the, the conversation to practice, uh, to practice pronunciation. Who wants to be Mr. Phil? Me. Okay, Jenny. And Jason, who wants to be Jason? Me, teacher. Okay. And Mrs. Field? Me. Okay, Rosie. Okay, let's begin. One, two, three. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I will turn up, turn it down. That's better, tense. Lisa, please pick up your thing. There's all over the floor. No, that was part of, of, of a drill. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Miss Phil? Yes, Mrs. Phil. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Lisa, please pick up your things. They are over the floor. Oh, okay, I will be Lisa. In a minute, mom, I'm on the phone. All right, but do it, uh, do it as, as soon as you hang up. As soon as you hang up. Okay. Okay, no problem. Goodness, where were we like that? This when we were kids. Mr. Phil, oh, where we like this when we were kids? Mm -hmm. Finally, definitely, 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 then. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Repeat again. Say again. Definitely. Definitely. Exactly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, with intonation in English, let's say something. They are like a uh, kind of acting all the time with pronunciation. Sometimes they are not expressive. But uh, Latin people is expressive with hands, with movements, but uh, American people is expressive with the intonation. So if we are like um, doing this, uh, for example, I will say this in Spanish. El acento del idioma inglés es grave. El acento del idioma um, eh, español es agudo. Nosotros tendemos a terminar las frases 
con encantadito, ¿no? Como, eh, como um, conversación, en cambio, en inglés es conversation. O sea, el, el acento va en la penúltima antes de terminar. Entonces, en base a eso, si hay una, por ejemplo, una, ex, una exclamación o una pregunta, tiene que ser como bien eh, uh, marcado, ¿verdad? Porque, uh, let, let's say, if I read this, like, if I'm just reading, is Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better, thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, mom, I'm, the, I'm on the phone. All right, but do it that as soon as you hang up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Do you see the difference? Do you see when they are, it's not like, um, ellos hablan así de verdad. O sea, ellos son bien, bien expresivos. En, el, en su idioma, entonces es como que si aquí, o sea, se están quejando de que los niños están, no hacen nada, ¿verdad? Los adolescentes tienen todo regado, te están oyendo la televisión a todo volumen, la otra está hablando por teléfono, no ha recogido sus cosas, entonces ellos están como, como la mamá le está pidiendo, el señor le está pidiendo al hijo que por favor lo apague, que lo que le baje, ¿verdad? Entonces es, Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better, thanks. Lisa, let's pick up your things. They are all over the floor. In a minute, mom, I'm on the phone. All right, but do it as soon as you hang up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Do you see the difference? It's like, it's not, no se sientan como que lo están exagerando, no sobreactuando, sino que así son los, así son las personas cuando hablan en inglés. Es como que, uh, uh, es como, como que lo están eh, eh, como muy, muy sensible, ¿no? Como que lo están actuando casi todo el tiempo. Entonces, este, eso les va a ayudar bastante para pronunciar otra cosa. Eh, se va a oír, ustedes pueden hablar inglés, pero si siguen con el acento agudo, se va a oír inglés con acento latín. Si ustedes hablan en inglés con el acento grave, que es la penúltima, se va a oír como inglés nativo, porque así es, o sea, cambia bastante, cambia bastante. Uh, quiero ver una palabra que se pueda... Mm, 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 mm. Aquí hay palabras pequeñas, pero hay otras donde se verifica. Por ejemplo, minute, minute, in a minute. O sea, el, la fuerza va en el mi, minute. En cambio, en español es minuto, minuto. Entonces dice, yes, in a minute. O sea, tratan de, de, de estar leyéndolo con español. Eso es un error que la mayoría, la mayoría, la mayoría siempre comete. Y, y en la entonación, ¿verdad? La entonación tiene que ser un poco diferente. Ok, I need another three. To play again the conversation and do the dialogue between, I would be again Lisa. And I need another Mr. Field, another Jason, and another um, Mrs. Field. May I have another three, please, volunteers? Me, teacher. Okay, Catherine, who wants to be? And me. Rosa Maria, okay. And the last one? Me. Elena. Elena. Okay, okay. Let's begin. One, two, three. Jason, Jason, turn down TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it is very loud. Okay, 
I will turn it down. That's better. Thank you. Lisa, please pick up your things. They are all over the floor. In a minute, mom, I'm on the phone. All right, but do it so soon as you hang out. Okay, no problem. Goodness, we were like this when we were kids. When we were kids. Intonation. Sam. Mm -hmm. And the, the last one? Definitely. Definitely. Repeat. Okay. Definite. Definitely. Lee. Definitely. Definitely. Exactly. Okay. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. And then uh, let me see. Just correction is uh, but is not but. But it's very loud. No, it's but. But. And then another is. Mm -mm, the other that I listen to is goodness, 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 goodness. That is the, the only two that I that I hear right now. It's but it's very loud. Okay, one more time just to see the the pronunciation. Mr. Field, Jason, Jason. Turn on the TV, please. Jason. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program, Mr. Phil. I know, but it's very loud. Jason, okay. It's not okay. It's okay. I'll turn it down. Mr. Phil, that's better. Thanks. Mrs. Phil, let's, let's pick up your things. They're all over the floor. Listen, in a minute, mom, I'm on the phone. Mrs. Phil, all right, but do it as soon as you can now. Listen, okay, no problem. Mrs. Phil, goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Mr. Phil, definitely. Okay. When we are reading contractions, we will have to make them. For example, I'll turn it down. It's not I will. It's I know, but it's very loud. It's not, but it is. No. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better. It's not that is better. They are all over the world. It's not they are. And I'm on the phone. It's not I am on the phone. Contractions looks uh, very, uh, very good when you are speaking English because it seems that you're dominating more the language. Uh, el lenguaje inglés es aglutinante. Esa es una característica que significa que termina en una letra y a la siguiente sigue con la misma letra. Entonces las une y se oye como que fuera una sola palabra de un solo. Entonces al, al hacer eso, este, se van a oír mejor cuando les, cuando les toque leer o pronunciar, ¿verdad? Eh, quiero ver aquí una que se repita. Mm. Turn it down. That's the business of this pick up your things. So it's already doing No. No hay ahorita, ¿verdad? Pero este, traten de, de hacerla porque cuando se unen, ahí es el problema, porque tienen que cambiar los movimientos de la lengua con los dientes y los aires de la de la que tienen que hacer, por ejemplo, cuando uno está hablando inglés, se tiene que oír un poquito así como ss, 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 cosa que no se oye en español, eh, más en español de nosotros, ¿verdad? Que se omite bastante la S, pero bien pronunciada. 
Entonces, ahí eh, tienen que ir, que ir guiando, ¿verdad? Cómo se van uniendo las letras para ir poniendo, acostumbrando la lengua a que se desenrolle y poniendo las, las formas en, el, en el, las posiciones, ¿verdad? Que nos aprendimos nosotros desde chiquitos. Nos enseñaron los sonidos de nuestro lenguaje. En inglés también hay sonidos de lenguaje que aquí no existen. Entonces, por eso hay que pronunciarlos bien. Um, let me see. Try to think a little bit about it. And you will, think, you will see that there are some differences that you maybe have not noticed uh, before. Tal vez solo lo hablan y no se habían dado cuenta que todas estas cosas existen. Vamos a la lección 1.2. In this lesson, you will practice using two-part verbs to make requests. Vamos a hacer como peticiones, ¿verdad? Con request. ¿Cuál es la diferencia, diferencia entre el request y el requirement? Un request es algo que me están solicitando, pero yo no necesariamente lo tengo que hacer así. Un requirement es que o así se hace, o así se hace. Como por ejemplo, una petición de visa. There are some requirements you have to fill up in order to apply for the American visa. Si hay un proceso que si no lo hacen ustedes, como tiene que ser, es mentira que le van a aceptar la aplicación. En cambio, un request es como una solicitud, como please bring, um, please bring your umbrella today. O sea, si usted quiere, la lleva, si no, no. Pero un requirement es que si no lleva la umbrella, no lo van a dejar entrar. Eso es diferente. Es la diferencia, ¿verdad? Un request a un requirement. Ok. See. Okay, another tutor. Hello, we're now moving to the explanation of two part verbs or phrasal verbs. Get your pen and notebooks ready and follow us for better understanding. Two-part verbs. Will for responding to requests. With nouns. Turn down the TV. Turn the TV down. Pick up your things. Pick your things up. With pronouns. Turn it down. Pick them up. Requests and responses. Please turn down the music. Okay, I'll turn it down. Pick up your clothes, please. All right, I'll pick them up. Let's talk about two-part verbs or phrasal verbs. These types of verbs are made up of two parts, a verb plus a particle. For example, put off. Put is the verb and off is the particle. It is also important to know that two-part verbs can change in meaning. The verb put means to place and put off means to postpone. Let's move on talking about two-part verbs with nouns. If the object is a noun, for example, TV, car, computer, can come before or after the particle. Read the following examples with me. The noise woke the giant up, or the noise woke up the giant. Both sentences are correct. Now, when the object of the two-part verb is a pronoun, it can only come between the verb and the particle. Pick him up. He keeps putting it off. Call her back. As a final note, when you use the same verb with a different particle, the meaning changes. For example, put plus off means to postpone. Put plus on means to cover your body with clothes. Put plus back means to return something to its original place. 
we will finish this explanation by adding that two-part verbs or phrasal verbs are very common, especially in formal English. Now that you have identified phrasal verbs, we want you to write some examples. Write on our discussion box one sentence using a phrasal verb with a noun and another sentence with a pronoun. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you understand or do you have uh, questions about it or do you want to listen again the video? One sentence using key, car, computer. Hello. What is the meaning in the postpone? What is the what? The meaning for the postpone, to postpone. To postpone, posponer. Ah, okay. Posponer. O sea, vamos a quitar eso un poquito. Es un poquito complicado. Vaya, por ejemplo, en el... En el, en el diálogo que vimos, este, teníamos, por ejemplo, la, eh, son verbos de dos partes, se le llama, ¿verdad? O phrasal también, porque le llama phrase porque son dos, ¿verdad? Pero, por ejemplo, es, se van a poner cuando se hacen como peticiones, por ejemplo, con nombres, turn down the TV, turn the TV down. Cualquiera de las dos está bien eh, escrita. Pick up your things, pick your things up. Eso es cuando son nombres. Cuando lo ocupamos como pronombres, en vez de TV vamos a poner it, turn it down. En vez de your things vamos a poner them, pick them up. Entonces la respuesta. La petición, la respuesta sería, please turn down the music. Podríamos decir, please turn it down. Y le respondemos, OK, I'll turn it down. Para no mencionar lo mismo, pero se está hablando de lo que es la música. Pick up your clothes, please. Recoge tu ropa, por favor. All right, I'll pick them up. OK, las recogeré. O la voy a, la voy a agarrar, ¿verdad? Y la, me la voy a llevar, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que está diciendo en esta. Eh, de ahí nos, nos explican que hay eh, verbos de dos partes o verbos de frases. Así se, se traduciría. Una eh, frase sería un verbo más una partícula. Por ejemplo, put off. Put es el verbo, tal cual, ¿verdad? que significa poner, ¿verdad? To place. Y off es una particle. Two part verbs can change in meaning. La put to place, que es poner o colocar. Put off to postpone. Así como put off your soap opera. It's English class time. Postpone tu novela es hora de clase de inglés. ¿verdad? Put off. Put off anything else. De ahí tenemos eh, la otra forma que es con nombre, ¿verdad? If the object is a noun, it is usually possible to put this before the particle of after it. Si la... Si lo usamos con nombres, nosotros podemos usar ese nombre en la, la, lo podemos cambiar, ¿verdad? Antes o después de la partícula. Por ejemplo, the noise woke the giant up. El ruido despertó al gigante. Woke up. El wake up es, wake up es despertar, ustedes saben, ¿verdad? Pero es un verbo que tiene dos palabras, wake up. Así como en The Matrix, wake up me, ¿verdad? Wake up me, despierta me. Entonces aquí es walk, walk the giant up. El nombre se puso entre las dos palabras del verbo. También podemos ponerlo al final. The noise woke up the giant. El ruido despertó el gigante. Lo mismo significa, cualquiera de las dos formas lo podemos hacer. 
cuando son pronombres con los verbos de dos partes, este, tenemos que debe ir antes de la partícula. Por ejemplo, pick him up. O sea, pick up es, la, es el verbo. Pick up es recoger. Pick him up. Recógelo. He keeps putting it off. Él mantiene, se mantiene posponiéndolo. Aquí putting it en medio of. Call her back. Llámala de regreso. Llámala de regreso. O sea, call back es llamar. El, a veces los latinos dicen llamar para atrás. Llamar para atrás. Eso es un poquito como cubano. Pero call her back es llamarla de regreso. O llamarla de nuevo. Por ejemplo, alguien que, que está ahí, ¿verdad? Y se fue y le dice, call her back. Call her back. Que regrese, ¿verdad? Llamarla de regreso. Llamarla de regreso. Call her back. Cuando son pronombres, siempre tiene que ir en medio de las dos palabras. Cuando son nombres, pueden ir al principio o en medio. Esas son las dos opciones. Cuando usamos el mismo verbo con una diferente partícula, el significado cambia. Así como yo les estaba diciendo del get off, get on, eh, get in, get into. Este es el verbo put, ¿verdad? Hay ciertos verbos que se pueden usar con diferentes partículas. Put off to postpone, posponer. Put on to cover your body with clothes. Put on your jacket, it's raining. Ponete la, la chompa, está lloviendo. Put on. Put on your tennis, we will go to make exercise. Ponete los tenis, vamos a hacer ejercicio. Put back. To return something to its original place. Put the, put the song back again. Si quiero escuchar una música y me gustó, le pido, hey, can you please put the song back again, please? Que le vuelva, la vuelva a sonar, ¿verdad? La música. Eso es un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Eh, put, them, put them back cuando es, cuando alguien es desordenado, ¿verdad? O lo quitó de donde, de donde estaba, ¿verdad? Las mamás, por ejemplo, dicen eso. Así. Can you please put them back where, where I placed before? Los podrías poner donde los puse al principio o los puse antes. Eso se ocupa bastante. Entonces tenemos que eh, saber usar. Esto se usa mucho en el lenguaje normal. Mucho, mucho, mucho. O sea, la gente que habla... Como cuando nosotros hablamos español, ¿verdad? Y tenemos modismo que ya sabemos qué significa eh, exactamente una palabra. Por ejemplo, eh, eh, no sé, una palabra como decir, um, se fue a dar aire, por ejemplo. Se fue a dar aire. El se fue a dar aire es como que nosotros sabemos perfectamente que la gente fue a pasear. ¿Verdad? Que fue a darse un aire, que fue a refrescarse, ¿verdad? Pero otra gente dice, se fue a dar aire, posiblemente no entiendan, ¿verdad? O por ejemplo, este, eh, se puso a, a, hay otro tipo de lenguaje, ¿verdad? Que no es muy educado, ¿verdad? Pero todo el mundo entiende. Por ejemplo, eh, eh, se, a veces dicen, se, se raneó, se raneó, ¿verdad? Todo el mundo dice, se raneó. Todo el mundo sabe que se durmió, ¿verdad? Pero no es el verbo, ¿verdad? No es se durmió, se tendría que decir, ¿verdad? Pero si dicen así, todo el mundo entiende que más o menos se durmió, ¿verdad? O, o, o no sé, este, o se le, fue, se le fue la onda, por ejemplo, cuando decimos se le fue la onda, es como que se, le, se, 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 se fue un ratito, ¿verdad? De conciencia que no entendió, pero decimos, ah, no, es que se le fue la onda, se le olvidó. Se le fue la onda, es se olvidó, pero no sabemos. Entonces, estos vienen siendo más o menos así como, y la única forma es practicándolos, entendiéndolos. Voy a tratar de buscar una lista de los más comunes, ¿verdad? Los que más se usan. Por ejemplo, este pick them up es eh, bien común, ¿verdad? Eh, pick up the phone es como 
cuando le reclaman la chica al, al, al chico que le estaba de llamar y nunca le contesta. Hey, can you please pick up the phone? I was calling you all the day. Podrías contestar, podrías levantar el teléfono, ¿verdad? No importa si es el celular. Esto se, se usó desde que hoy teníamos teléfono convencional, pero sigue, sigue usándose con el celular, ¿verdad? Can you please pick up the phone? Coger el teléfono, o sea, como que le, que le agarre la llamada, ¿verdad? Que le conteste. Es lo que tienen que, que, se tiene que analizar, ¿verdad? Son frases expresivas que ya tienen hechas y que están este, ya completamente eh, asumidas en el lenguaje. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta de, de, lo, de lo que hemos visto hoy. No. It's, it's new or are you familiar with these kind of topics? No, it's okay. Okay, okay. And the rest, ¿está fácil o está difícil? So, so. Complicado. And a little bit complicated. Yeah, phrasal verbs is a kind of complicated because you have to memorize them. And, y así, and practice. Entre más las practican, más se dan cuenta mm -hmm. cómo se usan y las oyen, ¿verdad? Pero para eso les voy a conseguir un, ahí un YouTube. Se lo voy a poner en el WhatsApp para que ustedes vean cómo las más comunes son un gran montón, ¿verdad? Pero este, ahí nos habían dejado un ejercicio que hiciéramos varias, ¿verdad? Mañana, let's have a homework. Let's try um, ten. Ten phrases. Ten phrases with using phrasal verbs or two word verbs. That is the same. Los que ustedes más entiendan, ¿verdad? Los que ustedes sientan que, ah, este lo puedo usar bastante. Por ejemplo, este de pick up the phone. Get on the bus, get on the plane, get in the car. Eh, get in the car is with el carro, ¿verdad? Get on the bus with el bus. Eh, put your, put your eh, music down. Bajale la música. Eh, quiero ver otra cosa. Take it off. Llévatelo. Take it off. Eh, Call take out. It. Take it easy. <laughs> eh, <laughs> call out. Call out es como. Of the trash. Llamar así como, como decir. Fulanito. Venite. O sea, call out es como llamar así como. Así como que estamos en el monte. <laughs> que, que acostumbramos bastante. Bueno, algunas personas, ¿verdad? Lo correcto es ir hacia la persona y decirle las cosas, ¿verdad? No es. Fulano, trajiste esto. <ríe> no, ¿verdad? O sea, eso es call out. Es como también, como por ejemplo, estamos en una fila, decir, hey, call out, call out your, your, your sister. Llamale a tu hermana. Entonces viene la persona, hey, come, come here. Eso es call out. Llamar a alguien así como para adentro, ¿verdad? Que call out es como medio gritar, más no gritar, ¿verdad? No que llamar con voz alta. Eso significa. Ok, investigate two word verbs. If you don't know the meaning or you don't know how to apply them, just ask me tomorrow. Or if you want, you can chat. No problem. I will be available for you 24 hours, kids. <ríe> si quieren comentar algo ahí, chatear o no sé, poner, practicar su, su spelling and su, su writing, también. Voy a estar ahí, ¿ok? Ok, nice. Okay. It's not raining okay, anymore. Thank you, not raining anymore. It's a very good weather. So, uh, tomorrow we will see you again, 8 o'clock. ¿Ok, kids? Ok. Ok. okay. Thank, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.